All right, y'all, you know why you're here. There's only one reason why you're here. You want to see the answers to the paper. Apparently, apparently, based on the, based on the reviews that I'm getting from, from folks on Instagram and whatnot, they said that the exam was, was, was kick. There were no crumbs left, that there was, there was a slaughter. I don't know, but what we're going to do is we're going to find out how much of a slaughter it was. If you ate, if you were eaten, were you the chef or were you the pot? Someone cooked here. Alright, cool. Let's go. Alright, we start off with the fact that it's actually white. It's white. So, um, quite white. Um, we have some dark lines on the left. You can clearly see that there are some inconsistencies in the, in the, in the uh, this area around here. So, um, what else? Okay, nice and white. So, whoever scanned it, they probably didn't take pictures. Or they did take pictures, but they took the pictures flat. Because the pages don't have those any creases on either side. Anything leaning to the right? No. Straight lines, straight lines. This might be one of the best scans I've I've seen in a long time. Like, what? Well, just, hold on, hold on. Let, let's keep scrolling. Consistency of the um, of the pages. They actually have the barcode at the bottom. Alright, alright. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Y'all, this paper... The black market has produced one of the best papers I've seen in a long time. I ain't seen I ain't see a black market paper like this in a long time. This gets this gets a proper 9.5 out of 10. The only reason is some little parts here faded on the side. But everything that matters, it's well like they even gave the, the, the cover page. The candidate receipt and thing inside here, you know. The black market doing well, it seems. Black market is doing well. Let let let's give them a let's give them a round of applause. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's go! Question number one. This is the first time I'm looking at the paper. I have not seen it. So, Connect Academy is an independent school that serves students at the secondary level. The school has embraced the use of technology to enhance the teaching and learning of the course content. Again, as I always tell you all, they always, always give you a scenario. So look at the, look at the scenario, understand the scenario, and make sure you answer to the scenario because they're not going to give you just definition questions out in the blue. The scenario questions must make sense. The answers must make sense based on the scenario. So let's go. So it's a school, key thing, and it serves students at the secondary level. So secondary level students, they will have different types of computers that they will need to use, right? The school has embraced use of technology to enhance the teaching and learning of course content. So their goal as a school, that is secondary, to enhance teaching and learning of a course. So with that in mind, let's think of what the answer could be. Identify two types of computers that could be used by teachers and students during the lessons. You have multiple things that you could use. You could have a laptop, which is the most common one. You could have desktop. But there are also different types of computers. You could have a, um, a tablet. And maybe if you're, if you're wilding, you could try a phone. They are all considered types of computers, right? They're all considered types of computers. But you have to understand the context that they're giving you. Is a school, more than likely, the, the students will use a laptop, the teachers could use a desktop, and they might be able to use a tablet. But phone, phone is a wild answer. If I were if I were marking, I'd probably argue for it, but I wouldn't argue for that right now, right? So we'll go with laptop, desktop, or tablet. Two marks there. Um, you, you have multiple ways I could say different things, but once you, uh, once you break them down. So if you were to go through the types of computers that you have, you have super, you have mainframe, you have desktop, you have laptop, slash portable, and then you have um, embedded. That's actually the part of the syllabus that they're testing. They're testing that part of the syllabus. So if you were to look at that part of the syllabus, there are two that immediately stand out, desktop and laptop. They have their own categories. So laptop and tablet might fall in the same portable kind of, Kind of, kind of location, so um, go with that. If you put personal computer and them kind of things, I don't know, that wouldn't work. You obviously can't put things like projectors and whatnot because they say types of computers. They clearly test in the five types of computers, clearly, right? All right, name one, one hardware device that may be useful for presenting lessons in the classroom. Of course, a projector. Um, they turn nothing else. Presenting is a, is a is a strange word because you might think presenting as visually. You could present something in audio also. I don't want to risk it. If you had to risk it, you could put like a speaker, but that would be a weak answer. I probably wouldn't give that correct, but in their answer sheets, it's possible that they could have it because because our CXC does work. They probably have speaker inside because presenting doesn't necessarily have to mean only visual. So you might get a speaker, might. 
I can't, I can't tell you that I'm 100% sure, but based on how they usually mark, maybe, right? All right, the school uses that database to manage this data, which is stored. And next scenario again, remember, as I told you all, scenarios matter, right? Um, ooh, somebody just said um, monitor. Yeah, you could put monitor or slash TV. All of those things will be able to present lessons in the classroom, yeah? So monitor, TV. If you want to go be wild with the ticket, say smart board. Anything that has a screen, that'll be, that'll be more along the lines of your best answer. If you say speaker, it'll be a weaker answer, but I think it should be okay. It should be okay. All right, so the school uses a database to manage its data, which is stored on uh, its local network. Identify one other storage method by which the school can gain access to its data on the independent the data on its local storage gets lost or becomes corrupted. They store it on its local network. One other storage method by which the school can gain access to its data in the event. Now the school has to gain access to the data in case the data on its local storage. Okay. So they say now the school uses a database and manages data which is stored on its local network. So there are two places that the data is stored. It has the, it has the local storage and then have the network storage. So one is here, one is here. So they're storing it on the network because they want to be able to get it if the local doesn't work. That's basically what the question said. Which is school can gain access to this data in the event that its local storage gets lost or become corrupted. Yeah. Right, so if your local storage not working properly, you want to send it in the cloud. So cloud storage. Or, or you could have um, off-site backup. So you could have cloud storage, you could have an off-site backup, which will be like tape storage or something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. Because what they're saying is they have it stored locally. Locally mean it's stored on their computer and they want to they want to have a backup they already tell you they have a backup on their local network so they want another one one other storage method so other one will be cloud or offsite backup so we'll take that right but that's a nice question that's a, that's a nice question because i love the application questions because it actually shows the children who understand how it works in the real world other than students who just kind of memorize everything it, it, the database question came in question one how nice well, what is this Wow, i never seen the database question come in question one though. Let's see what the database question is in. All right, the following data was taken from the school's database. So we have a student table, we have a course table. Stay the appropriate data types. I think we see a question like this already, you know. I remember seeing this question in another paper. All right, the data type of student ID here. This is clearly, you could see letters and numbers. So that means it is text or short text. All right, so if you put just text, that should be okay. But, but there's a differentiation between short text and um, long text. Student is text, short text again. Short text. Age will be um, number. Grade level, number also. Some people have put like integer and what kind of thing, but when you're creating a database, there are some basic words that they use. Um, it's just say short text, short text. Because there's only short text and long text when you're creating a database. Anything else, that's up to the examiner to decide to accept that or not. If you if you just put text alone, they should accept it. If you put letters on or alphanumeric, that is up to the examiner. I cannot speak, I cannot speak for them. Because remember, they have a mark scheme to work with and they're gonna use the mark scheme to work with, right? All right, state the field that would be best used as the primary key in the student table. That's easy, the student ID, because it's not duplicated, right? Primary keys are keys that are not duplicated. Student ID. Because a primary key is a number or a, a field, sorry, that cannot be duplicated. So that when you're searching for it, you'll be able to find it, right? <clears throat> Identify the field in the course table that can be used to link the... Yeah, this is exactly a question. I, I, I'm sure that this is an exact question that came like a few years ago. It's almost the exact same thing. Um, Identify the field in the course table that can be used to link the course table and the student table and name and the name of the key given to the field. Identify the field in the course table that can be used to link to the link the course table and student. So we want to go from course to student. So in the course table, you will take student ID and link it with student ID here, right? So in the course table, this will be this will be our primary key here, primary key, and this will be our foreign key. Here. So we're trying to say that the course. Identify the course table that can be used to link the course table and the student table and state the name of the key given to the field. The field in the course table. Okay, so we say in student ID and this will be the foreign key because you're looking at it from the course table perspective. If you're looking at it from the course table perspective, that means you're looking at it as here. This is the primary key on top here and this is the foreign key on top here because the primary key is the one that is in the table that cannot be duplicated. And the foreign key, you could you could see that the foreign key may have duplicates like um 
it's possible for the foreign key to have the, even though they don't have any in this question do they no two or three four two but it'll be foreign key because the primary key inside here is id right so student id foreign key it definitely is not the primary key which of the following is a result of a query um following is a result of a query which is designed to display the course average of each student state the feature that was used to, in the query to generate the course average course average i would be a calculated query i believe yeah calculated query because they say query once you say query um calculated query now you could do there there is another way to do a calculation which is to use um summary options i think a summary options is it would be there is a there is a summary thing where you click the little um the little e thing that look like this i'm not too sure summary options i think it is but yeah but once you put calculated query um it should be okay the reason why I do think they will they will accept calculated field is because they would say state the feature that was used in the query to generate it. So that means they're actually running a query to get it. It's not a it's not a built-in feature in the um in the thing. So it's calculated query. I would accept that. If they will accept calculated field, I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Once you add the word calculated, they might they might take it easy on you and be like, okay, well they said calculated. Obviously, they mean that I don't know. But calculated query is definitely the answer because they mentioned query, query inside the, uh, the statement, you know, right? When creating a report in a database, grouping can be very useful. Let's explain the purpose of grouping. Okay, grouping, grouping. Remember, right, so what uh, what I normally tell students is that when they ask any questions about databases now, they're asking you questions about your understanding of why certain things have to be done in databases. So create, just being able to create a report in the SBA, that's cool. That will get you through your SBA. But understanding why you have to create a report, that's what we're going to get you through um, your paper too. So grouping is necessary. Grouping, sorry, they say purpose. The grouping gives you the ability to separate parts of the report based on useful groupings or segments or categories that make sense, make it easier to read or analyze by the report reader. Yeah. So the reason you group things like let's say you have to do a report on males and females. You would do a report and you group it by gender because you want to make sure that it's going to be easy to differentiate between the males and the females. Let's say it's pass or fail. You might want to group the report based on who passed or who failed. You might want to group the report. Let me see, let's look at this one. You might want to group the report based on um, their age or grade level. Yeah, you might want to group by grade level because you want to see how each grade level um, um, accomplished it. So the goal is you're trying to make it easier for the person who is reading the report to understand what is taking place. So anything that has to do with understanding what is taking place, you should be okay making it simpler, making it more user-friendly, making it more readable, all those different things. That's your goal. That's the whole point of grouping in a report, or else the report will be useless. All right, part E. The school recently held security workshops for both staff and students to heighten their awareness of security threats and practices. I love this question. This question is a real, is a real nice question. Like, honestly. Describe two ways by which staff can protect. I must say, CXC is getting better at asking questions. Like, when they started off with this new syllabus, it was horrible. But I must say, they, they're actually getting better. I, I, I think so. Right? Describe two ways by which staff can protect their computers and data from possible security threats. Okay. Um, this is how staff could protect their computers, right? This is not about the um, this is not about the school. So staff could have strong passwords. They said describe, so that means you have to describe it. You would say the password should have at least eight characters, capitals, numbers, and special characters. Right, that's enough for two marks because remember this is four marks, so you're breaking that up into two, 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 right? Um, two ways in staff could protect their computers and data from possible security threats. Now, possible security threats could be anything. Definitely, you want to have a password. Um, other security threats I could get um, would be they could encrypt their data, yeah, encryption. They can encrypt their files so that even if it is stolen, they they cannot be accessed. All right, so strong passwords, encryption um, should be okay. Um, other not notable mentions will be um, antivirus, anti-malware, something along those lines. Um, mm, you could put a firewall. If you explain a firewall, that will be block information because possible security threats could be anything. So 
It could be on the internet, but it could be physical. Um, security measures, antivirus, anti-malware, firewall, strong passwords, encryption. There are physical, there are physical, um, there are physical security measures, and then there are virtual logical security measures. So I think you could get physical too. You could like lock it, <laughs> lock it in a room, lock and, and it can explain that. The lock and key one is a, is, is a wild one though, that, that one, that one's this one kind of weak. I wouldn't recommend you try to do the lock and key one, no. That, that's, that's not a, that's not the strongest of the strong. So, but the examiners might take it, the examiners may take it, I can't say. Two personal security measures students should take when they are online. Um, you could check links, check URLs for authenticity. Um, you could cross-reference with other websites. You could don't download links. Don't, sorry. Don't download links. Download files from, from unknown links. Files from unknown links. As, oh, it's only two marks. I wrote three, three by mistake. All right, each one of them could be individual. I think the syllabus has four things. Check for authenticity of URLs. Check for references to other sites. Don't download links. And um, yeah, I think they could accept plenty of things. They could accept a lot of things. I'm, I, there are plenty of ways I could see this. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, there are others, but those should be straightforward. Check for authenticity. Check the URL. Cross reference with other sites and don't download. It. All right. First question. I would say first question was 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 cake. First question was cake. I believe so.